Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's session uh, <clears throat> where we're going to be talking about optimizing performance in Vislib Custom Report. Uh, we've got a extraordinary amount of people here today. So we've got about 100 registered. Um, I think over just over that, which is really nice to see. Uh, we're going to give everyone just a literally couple of minutes uh, or a minute or so uh, just to, to come on. We can see a few people joining now. So uh, bear with us and we'll, we'll, we'll kick off in a, a few seconds. So I think we'll 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 start. We've we've got a uh, we've we've got a a quick session today. We we've we've uh, set this up as as a fifteen minute bite sized session. Uh, we're talking about how to optimize that performance in Visible Customer Report, and I think uh, we're just really pleased to see many, so many people join us today. Uh, we mentioned we saw about just over hundred registered. I think the the key thing is if you're here today, you'd have had a personal rec uh, invite from one of your customer success managers. So it's really lovely to see everyone here today. Um, quick introduction, my name's Al, uh, Al Heron. Uh, I look after product marketing here. I've got the pleasure as well of introducing Michael Nordstrom, who uh, I can see now on video. Uh, so Michael will come in in a short while. Um, supercharging ClickSense, uh, your native ClickSense with Vizlib, I think is, is what we're all about here today. Um, we wanna make sure that today is interactive. It, Michael, if we could go to the next slide, please. I can. Thank you. Uh, you will see on the right hand side. So if you go to slido.com on your laptop, uh, or if you grab your smartphone and literally just, just open up your camera and have a look at that. And we, we would love to have some questions from, from you. You're the most important people that are here today. Uh, so that would be great. Let's make sure we, we give Michael some difficult questions, I think, uh, put him on the spot. Uh, but I think what we're going to do is, you know, we're seeing the topics there. Michael, do you want to do you, you go through, do you want to give us an intro there? To yep, of course. Let's get started. So, um, and also one thing to mention about Slido, it's completely anonymous. So don't be afraid to ask uh, what you might fear is stupid questions um, or difficult questions. As Al mentioned, feel free to just add them there and, and we'll take a look. So the topics for today, first of all, just a quick one on how a custom report works, um, because it's important for the understanding of understanding the performance. If we don't understand how it works, we can't understand the performance. So we need a bit of an intro on that. Then actually going through the common performance bottlenecks that we have. And finally, how we improve the performance and what we can do. And then in the end, some time for questions if we have it. And we should have a couple of minutes at the end, I hope. So, yep, that's the agenda. And now to how does custom report work and what does it do? So custom report, the background is a, is a long one, so I'm not going to bore you with the whole background. But the background is that we needed a way to quickly allow users to create their own reports rather than having to create a lot of them. So giving the user a bit of sort of almost developer capabilities, but in a very safe and secure environment where we know that all the calculations are still correct. So how it works is that basically two things that we do, we say, hey, click, and then we ask click to show us something. And that something is based on dimensions, measures, and a visualization. So we decide what dimensions we want to see, we decide what measures we want to see, and we decide how that should be shown in type in terms of a table, a pivot table, a bar chart, a Sankey chart, whatever it is that we want to show. So that's the only thing that, that we do, and that's the only thing that Click actually does with it, is just show that thing. So from from a so from a Vislib and a visualization perspective, we do very little. We ask the engine to create this. It's all created on the engine side. Um, and then the visualization is sent to the front end and shown to the users. This means that you will have the same sort of challenges that you would have 
in a normal table, you would have the same challenges here because it is the same thing. And if you're using native ClickSense objects inside the custom report and showing them, the objects that you see are the same as would be created inside a normal ClickSense sheet that wouldn't have the extension. So that's how it works. Uh, now to uh, what this webinar is supposed to be mostly about, about the performance bottlenecks. And you have the Slido information here again, in case you didn't catch that in the first time around. So the performance bottlenecks, the calculation complexity of any calculation in a measure that you're doing is the most common sort of problem or issue that we see with performance. Creating really complex measures will always be a struggle for the click engine. So that's the most common one. The data model is another one. Uh, keep the data model as simple as possible and Click will calculate the values faster uh, compared to when you have a really big data model, especially avoid things like link tables or bridge tables um, as they will be really, really bad for the Click calculation performance. There are other webinars around how that works, which are actually quite interesting and worth watching. Not a topic for today though, but data model is another big issue. And then of course, data volumes. If you have a huge amount of data and want to show that in, um, in a chart, it will take a little bit of time to calculate. In terms of data volumes, we also see some questions around exporting and exporting really large data volumes. Yeah, that's also going to be slow uh, because just then the issue is just pushing all that data across. And especially that could be if you have a really wide table. So let's say you created a table with 20 columns and a few hundred thousand rows. Exporting that is, is actually a lot of data points because you have to multiply the rows by the columns, which means that you'll get a, a lot of data volumes in there. The other thing that we've seen lately is a lot around click environment and setups. Um, we see that a lot of customers are actually struggling with their environment, which, uh, with even basic things. Um, part of this is due to customers moving their environments to sort of their own cloud setups or virtual machines and are not optimizing Click for that. So we'll get back to that a little bit when we talk about what we can do, uh, but this is a common one, uh, unfortunately. Some of this uh, is solved when customers are moving to Click Cloud. Some of it actually gets worse. So it depends a little bit on the situation. The network speed is something that we will be an issue, especially when it comes to things like exporting data or pulling larger tables across. When we're visualizing um, more like a bar chart or simple visualization, the network speed is typically not that much of an issue. Um, the amount of data that we have to transfer to show a bar chart is typically relatively small. Even if we're uploading the actual visualization, like from the Vizlib visualization and uploading that, even if we're doing that, it's still just a couple of megabytes of data. So it's, it's not a huge amount that has to go across the network, but it can definitely be an issue. And then of course, the custom report has to load. Um, the thing that we see here is typically when you have a huge amount, like a couple of hundred dimensions or measures uh, that's going to be loaded into the custom report at the same time, we see that that takes a bit of time still. That's something that we're also working on on our end to make even faster. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's still lower on the list compared to everything else, which usually has a much bigger impact. Yeah. Michael, I, I know one of the things you wanted to do is you wanted this and, and the key is the order of importance in there as well. So, you know, I think that was a, the hint from you um, as well was that order of importance in, in what you're showing here today on the performance uh, and the bottlenecks that you can see. So we, we've we've looked at performance bottlenecks. How 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 do you where do we go next to to actually kind of that supercharging that? Uh, how, how do we move on to, to helping the, 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 uh, the attendees here? Yeah, so how do we actually improve? Yeah. Uh, how do we make it better? Well, of course, um, so something to do first would be to just, um, uh, first of all, check the app, check the calculations, check the environment. That's the obvious one, um, since that will be the thing that has the bigger impact. The other things are probably more related to Click and more specifically the custom report. Um, so setting a good default, I will show how that's done in just a second. So I'll just yeah. go through these bullet points and then I'll just show how this is done. 
So setting a good default, uh, keeping the data sets a little bit smaller will actually help a lot. So if you can have users switch between data sets, that usually both makes it easier to find things, but also makes it easier for them to, to not had too many things in the same table and slow down the performance. Uh, using bookmarks to help users navigate straight to the right data set rather than having to jump around helps. And um, that also goes for presets, by the way, so I will, I will show that. And then defer layout update is a feature that stops the custom report from calculating until you're actually done with uh, the different calculations that you're trying to do. So I'm going to show how these works uh, really quickly. Um, so we here have a normal, just a normal custom report set up. Uh, this is from the template demo app. So first of all, setting a default. So what comes up first when the page loads? Obviously, if you the first thing that you load is a table with 40 columns and all the dimensions and measures selected, yeah, you get a lot of data on there at the same time. So the user sees that there's a lot of data, but then that initial load will take a long time and the perceived performance will be really bad. So what we want you to do is make sure that you have a good setup. Once you're happy with that setup, be that a bar chart table or number of dimensions and measures, but keep it relatively small if you can, uh, then the users can always adjust it. That's what the custom report is all about. So you have the data set, let's say, for example, the small report data set that we have here. Um, uh, we can actually take a look at this one instead. Um, the data set, we have save default state and show default state. So if I had made any different selections than the default, this would change it to the default, or I can just save the default state. So just go in, make the selections that you want, and save the default state. And do that with few dimensions and few measures. It will help a lot. Then keeping the data sets small. So as you saw here, we had something what's called the small report and we had the super report. If we take a look at those, uh, we have the small report, which is just a few dimensions of measures. This will be quicker than, for example, the super report here, which has a lot of dimensions and measures. So in this case, it's still just a few or 10, 20 ish dimensions. But if you had 200 dimensions here, it would actually become quite a bit slower. Um, again, that's something that we're trying to improve even further, but we didn't even realize that people would add something with 300 measures and 300 dimensions in here when we first created the custom report. So initially it wasn't even built to handle that. I think we're, we're doing a reasonable job at it now where we're going to improve that even further. But even if that wasn't the case, making them data sets smaller will actually be really helpful. Then using bookmarks, any bookmarks can be used. So just create a bookmark and it will save the settings of the custom report. Makes the user, it makes it really easier to navigate to the right one. This is what the users can do. A similar feature to the bookmarks is the presets, which you can do inside. Sorry, uh, we can actually show what they look like here. So here you have presets, which is then more or less a quick link to a data set with a certain visualization. Super simple to use. And the final one, defer layout update, uh, is a feature where when I make a change, you get this screen. What happens is that we're blocking calculations in the background saying that, hey, don't calculate this yet, wait until I'm done. And now when I'm done doing my selections, I say update layout. This way, the only requests for calculations that are sent to the, to the engine are is the request at the end. If I don't have deferred layout, every change that I make in the dimensions and measures will generate a request to click to calculate that combination of dimensions and measures. If it's a small data set, it's gonna be fast. You don't need this. If it's a big data set, it makes a huge difference if you're actually asking click to wait with calculating until you're done. Yep, so those were the uh, performance improvement things. Brilliant. Uh, Michael, we've got, uh, and it's good to see, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Um, I'm seeing some coming through Slido, some coming through different uh, chat boxes. But the key thing is we're collaborating and we're seeing all of those questions. Um, Michael, first one, um, first one, 
Uh, probably not what you've touched on today, but we've got questions. Uh, we've got questions. I, I saw uh, I saw some social uh, posts around biz tips. How does how does you know how does that work in what you're showing us here? Um, mm, biz tips and um, it doesn't. Well, biz tips are not really relevant here. Uh, we don't have them inside the custom report. Um, so, so that, that's not really relevant to to the custom report. I'm not sure exactly the concept of how that relates okay. to this. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll one thing on. that I should mention, um, and that's sort of when you're seeing, if you're seeing that you have slow performance, and if you feel that that's something that you're suffering from, what you should try and what you should do to try to figure it out, and one thing to try is of course to see if, if there's something wrong with the custom report usually there isn't there might be and the way that you should see if there is is of course to just try the whole page without this chart so so without the custom report so example if this chart was slow you could very quickly just uh sorry uh, very quickly just uh, add this object to a new sheet uh and take a look at at the sheet um now this object is now just a normal click sense table so you can then check how fast this table is outside the custom report if it's slow here as well it's probably to do with your calculations your environment or something to do with the normal click stuff and not the custom report so it's an easy thing that you can do just to check the performance of any table that you have inside the custom report yeah Couple of other questions, Michael. I know you're going to in, enjoy answering these ones. Uh, does this? It, uh, can we have this in uh, in ClickSAS? Is is that is that does that yes. everything work the same? Yes, everything works the same. Uh, what we are limited with in ClickSAS is that uh, Click does not allow image exports from third-party extensions in SAS. You have to ask Click to start allowing that. That's yeah. something that we would request all our customers to ask Click to please stop uh blocking that so that we can do it um it's something that, that we know is limitation uh and would be really helpful if they just open that up sure um another one and there are quite a few questions coming in i think what i'd like to say is that it's good to see keep them coming because what we can do is we can come back and answer those directly can we set bookmarks in custom reports then michael yes so yes you can uh, so you can set bookmarks in uh, from the custom report. Uh, you just use the normal bookmark functionality, but now with the latest version, what you can also do is you can you can add the new buttons, and they can connect to click uh, to, to Vislib actions, and the Vislib action can then connect to a bookmark. So you can actually start a bookmark from here using Vislib actions as well if you wanted to. But the normal thing and what we try to teach our users is to use the normal bookmark functionality within ClickSense and it will pick up the settings from, from custom report. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the time. Um, and I'm seeing lots, again, I'm, I'm, we're, we're kind of two or three minutes over, Michael. I know you've been presenting. Thanks for that. That was really cool. Um, I think the amount that you've got through today has, has, been, has been tremendous uh, and we will get back to everyone. Final word from you on, I don't know if you're seeing any of these questions or kind of a final word from you as, as we sign off, My, Michael, any? No, I, th I think that the thing to remember is a little bit around how this works um, and and what it does is only just asking Click to get a visualization and to calculate it for us. So even though it's a super big and, and complex extension, uh, the, the theory behind it is really simple. Uh, so when you're testing this, when you're trying to figure out what's possibly going wrong, uh, have that in mind, what it does. And of course, do contact us with any issues that you have, any bugs that you find. Uh, we do really consider everything that comes in, uh, both in terms of feature requests and bug reports, obviously. Yeah. Michael, I appreciate your time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to finish on this because a, a lot of the questions have come through around, is this going to be recorded? Are we going to send it out? And the answer is yes. Um, and again, I, I mentioned, we, we, you know, we're a listening company. We, one of our mottos is to build for you, the people that have joined today. It's that that I'd like to finish on because we had, I think we mentioned we had 109 join. Uh, actually, we've got well over 140 on the session right now. So from London, uh, Michael, from 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 the from, from from your part of the world as well, I think uh, we'd like. We, it was fantastic to see everyone join today. Um, and thanks ever so much for your time. Thank you.